coming out tonight. It's um, now 6 o'clock. It's time for March 5th, 2019, regular scheduled board meeting. Up tonight, I've asked Commissioner Fleming to open us with the invocation and the pledge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This afternoon, our Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Our Father, we come because we need you. Father, we realize that you made us and you know all about us. Father, we thank you for all things and we thank you for things as well as they are. We pray that, that you will bless our country, bless our nation. God, give us strength. Help us to overcome the wiles of the devil. Father, we ask that you be with us this night. Watch over us as commissioners. Give us strength. Give us a mind to do your will. For we lean and we depend on you always. And we trust that you make a way, be a provider for us. Father, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I just want to point out to the board that tonight we got the long-handled mics, so speak into it at the request of one of the gentlemen in the audience. He said he's tired of not being able to hear us talk. <laughs> I told him to move to the front row, and he said he didn't want to. <laughs> we did. Oh, yes, yes. He may not have gotten it yet, so I wasn't going to mention it tonight. All right, uh, first item on the agenda is, agenda is approval of the minutes for February, 2009, or February 19, 2019 regular scheduled board meeting. Does anyone have any changes or corrections? Uh, there was one, Mr. Chairman. Speaking to the mic, please, sir. <laughs> I am. This doesn't sound very loud. <laughs> um, and I've got to find it again. I apologize. Um, I'm sorry, I can't find it right now. Um, I think it was minor, so we'll just leave it at that. Oh, no, go ahead. All right, anyone else have anything? No, sir. No, sir. I have a motion to approve. Second. Second. Well, I'm saying, do I have a motion? <laughs> motion. motion. <laughs> 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 you got a motion by Commissioner Hill, second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Our own consent agenda, we have two through 13, item six being pulled for a quick comment by our attorney. Anything else needing to be pulled? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve two through five, seven through 13. Motion approved. Second. I got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, item number six, approval of agreement with Leasing 2, Inc. for cardiac monitors for fire rescue, budgeted item. Mr. Pratt. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the part that you see in the package is really not the contract that that's going to be entered for this. If you'll recall, several months ago, you approved uh, go ahead and, and purchasing the cardiac monitors, and at the time we were dealing with an, another uh, leasing entity. Um, because we were not able to come to terms with the other leasing entity, uh, we had to go back out and look for another avenue for that. Uh, we've come with a different company now, uh, Leasing 2, and we've dealt with the, this entity before. So I just wanted to make you all aware that it's, it, the, the purchase of the item has already been approved, but even when we went back this time with the lease, we even got a better lease price, this on the lease rate. And what you see tonight is just the lease rate. The actual contract will come back at a later time. All right. You have any questions for Mr. Pratt? No, sir. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Hale. To approve, do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, sir. Uh, moving on to item 14, proclamation honoring Pam Wilkes for her long service on the Suwannee County Historical Commission. Eric Musgrove, chairman of the Historical Commission presenting. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening. Good evening. For the record, Eric Musgrove, Chairman of the Swanee County Historical Commission. Uh, we wanted to honor one of our long-term members, and what I'm going to do is just read off this proclamation, if that's okay with you. A proclamation honoring Pam Wilkes for her long service on the Swanee County Historical Commission. Whereas, in January of 2019, Pam Wilkes resigned as a member of the Swanee County Historical Commission due to events beyond her control. And whereas Mrs. Wilkes had been a member of the Swanee County Historical Commission since its creation in 1980, and whereas Mrs. Wilkes was the last charter member of the Swanee County Historical Commission still serving, and whereas during the tenure of Mrs. Wilkes, the Swanee County Historical Museum Complex was established, the passenger depot was renovated, an oral history project was initiated, and numerous other historical projects were completed. And whereas the work of Mrs. Wilkes upon the Swanee County Historical Commission has not gone unnoticed by the Swanee County Board of County Commissioners and the public at large, be it resolved by the Swanee County Board of Com County Commissioners, excuse me, on this, the fifth day of March 2019, that Pam Wilkes be honored by this proclamation, thanking her for her long service upon the Swanee County Historical Commission. So we just wanted to honor her for her many years of service. We appreciate it greatly. Pam, you were there from the very beginning when the county decided to try to, to preserve and present what history that we have. So just a little show of thank you, and hopefully the county commission will approve this and perhaps get a little photo op after this. Thank you, sir. So I have a motion by the board to approve the proclamation honoring Ms. Pam Wilkes. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor, say aye. 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 All those, same sign. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a picture if that's what you want to do. That'd be great. Yep. Ms. Pam, we thank you so much for the time that you did commit to Swanee County and the Historical Commission and all the efforts you put in. I know some of the meetings and some of the years on it were probably trying times, but uh, it hadn't gone on notice, and everybody appreciates your service. Thank you for your time. Moving on to item 15, uh, county attorney Adam discussed possible board action adoption of resolution conveying certain surplus properties in Suwannee County to American Legion Post 107. Mr. Prevatt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was previously asked to look into this after the uh, last board meeting, well, actually two board meetings ago, uh, about the process to be able to uh, convey the property you know, to them. First of all, the, the, in the process, what you'd have to do is declare the property as surplus property. You need to look at it, make sure that there's not any other use that y'all could make of the, of the property, and then just have a motion to declare it a surplus property. Then we'll get into the part uh, about how we go about uh, conveying the property. I sent y'all a memo. Y'all got the memo in the packet. It just kind of outlines it, you know, as as you go along. Um, so, do you really have any questions about it? 
No, sir. Do we just need some discussion on whether we're going to surplus it or not? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think it's pretty clear what the use of the property is mm -hmm. and what the intent of the board has been for the onset of the agreement that we're currently in and what the future use is going to be. And uh, I, I'd hope that the rest of the board feel the same way that, that the county's use of the property is pretty much none at this point and uh, I would just ask that we declare it surplus. I agree. Mr. Chairman, I would agree 100 percent and I've seen the property and understand what it is used for solely for the use of uh, the um, uh, American Legion so um, I would move that we would uh, surplus it. Mr. Chairman, I also would say that I had an invite to come out to visit. I'm out there all the time anyway. Um, and I have had an invite to stop by, and I want to give my uh, my uh, good uh, riddance to him also. All right, you, you made a motion, Mr. Richardson. I got a motion by Commissioner Richardson to declare the property surplus. Do I have a second? Second. second. I had two seconds. I'm just going to. Was that <laughs> Mr. Stapleton? Who was that, Mr. Stapleton? Second by Mr. Stapleton. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. All right. Now that we have a piece of property that the county has surplused, we must find a use for the property. Uh, we can determine that uh, now that we can go through various processes, which includes uh, selling it, giving it away, doing other things, you know, with it. But if we're able to uh, give away the property, um, you just need to make sure that the organization to whom you would like to donate is an appropriate authorized agency. I think, as I mentioned in my memo, that American Legion was chartered by the United States Congress back in 1919 as a for-profit entity for, for veterans. Uh, I'm not going to go against the U.S. Congress when they say that it's a good organization and charitable purposes organization. So I think they probably would qualify underneath as an authorized entity. Um, so y'all need to decide moving forward. One of the things I had suggested putting on the, the property was if we were, able, were to uh, donate the property or you decide to donate the property uh, to the American Legion, that there be placed a and a, a reverter clause on there. Uh, the purpose for that was we understand what your purposes are and we want those purposes to continue. Uh, if it does not continue, uh, we'd have to look at it and, you know, at some later time and see what other use be, ma be made of the property that is currently surplused. So you'll need to decide how you want to do. The reverter language that I uh, have suggested uh, just is this this conveyance is made by a grantor and accepted by the grantee grantor being the county grant grantee being uh, post 107 on the express condition that the grantee use the property for the purposes of housing at an American Legion post in Swanee County it being expressly provided that if said property should ever cease to be used for such housing of the American Legion post located in Swanee County, then the title thereto shall immediately revert to the grantor or back, or back to the county. I would note that when we were going through all of these things, I would, in my memo, that um, I, I could not find where the American Legion post was uh, incorporated, utilizing the name that Mr. Harry had given me, and I had to search through SunBiz until I finally came up with it. And the American Legion is incorporated as American Legion Swanee Post 107, comma, Inc. Uh, they have not changed the name. Uh, they did it one time before, and some time periods expired, so it really didn't actually ever get changed. So we need to get with uh, the post leadership to see how they want it uh, you know, to be titled, whether it be in the current name or wait for them to go ahead and have the name changed and then be able to place the deed into uh, the entity when it has the appropriate name change. 
All right. Well, I think the reverter is fair. Um, I think the intention of the post is for it to always remain a post. And if for some reason, 100 years from now it doesn't, then that board and that post legion can come to terms with it then. But I think we're going to be good for a while. Um, so so what I need now then is just a motion uh, you know, to convey the property uh, for whatever consideration that you, you desire. And I understand it's zero, but you need to say it in the motion uh, to the American Legion post uh, with the reverter clause. That's actually on your second page, I think, of the memo. Yes, sir. Uh, last, second to last sentence. Yeah. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt the rev resolution to convey the property to the American Legion Post 107 with the reverter clause that if the property ceases to be the American Legion Post, it would revert back to the county? I'll make a motion. Got a motion by Commissioner Stapleton. Second. Got a second by Commissioner Hale. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Anything else, Mr. Attorney? No, sir, that's it. I will say, though, I, I do have a, a deed prepared, um, and leadership can let me know whether or not how they want to take title to it. Um, I know, I think, may y'all somebody have something they prepared they want to say or speak, or you good? If, if you did, you if, you, if you, anyone else here is one, I know a couple of you mentioned you may want to say something. Yes, sir, if you come to the podium, just give your uh, name and address for the record. Uh, Robert Gentry, 644 361st Road, Live Oak. I'm the adjutant of Post 107. And we're in the process of changing the name, the corporate name. Uh, we have the paperwork, and we'll be mailing it in this Thursday to the state of Florida to have it changed to Harry C. Gray II, or American Legion, Harry C. Gray II, Post 107. Memorial, Memorial, Memorial Post 107. <laughs> to okay. keep you straight. Mm -hmm. Right. Just, just so we're clear, uh, you can take title to it now as it is, and it'll automatically you know, change just because you changed the name of the entity. But I can certainly wait for another week or so for y'all to be able to do that, and then we will be sending that in this Thursday. So I think Mr. Is... Harry knows how to how to find me. So we, once you get the paperwork back, he can bring it to me, and I'll adjust the deed accordingly. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Did you have anything? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Jim Bro, 8001, 97th Court in Live Oak. Uh, and on behalf of the, our post and all veterans, particularly in Suwannee County, we are grateful for this consideration. And we are hopeful that the citizens of the county can appreciate what we do in our volunteerism around the county and the things that we do contribute, especially leaving a legacy for those who have passed. We wish to recognize them and keep that in perpetuity around this area. We've got a lot of dedicated veterans here and a lot of people who unfortunately are no longer with us, but we are grateful for their service. We are grateful for your service to our community and the people of Suwannee County. We thank you for this consideration and we hope to make, take, make best advantage of it and right now, we would like to invite everybody to our 100th anniversary of the American Legion, which started March 19th, 1919. And we will be celebrating this with an open house at our post on March 17th, Sunday, March 17th, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And we welcome you all out there to see our new barbecue facility and see what we've got going around here and who we are as citizens of this county, thank you very much for all your help. Thanks, sir.
Well, thank you all for coming out. I'm glad we could get it conveyed to you. Um, we appreciate everything you all do. And I know it's a uh, boring meeting, so I will take a little break. If you all want to stay, you all are more than welcome to. If not, I'll give you a little time to go. Let's go speak to you. Thank you all. You can, yeah, you can go ahead and give it to us. I got you. I, uh, we, we're pretty open. We don't really have protocol. It's not a boring meeting. These are fun meetings. I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, went to that. Hey, look at your calendar uh, for March 14th. I'll be in March. This time we have staff reports. What's you? We got Jimmy Norris, our economic director, but we'll say I'm a little disappointed, Mr. Norris. Don't say it. He didn't wear his hat. I knew he was going to say it. No, he didn't. Well, no, I was no, going. No, no, no. I was going where the hat. Good money on those hat and suspenders. I want to know where they're at. They, well, well, I actually laid them out this morning before I left the house, and uh, when I started to leave, my wife had somehow uh, hidden them from me. So uh, I think she was afraid that Jamie was going to get a picture of me, you know, with that on, and she was afraid how that may represent. You know, I understand. So, but I do appreciate, you know, my comrades giving me a hat and suspenders. So, uh, good evening. Good to be here for the first time in this role, I guess, giving a report. So, if it's uh, if it's too long, just give me the, you know, I'll get out of here. If it's too short, I'll try to keep talking. So, um, I guess uh, I'm I'm going to start with um, as as last meeting, uh, Commissioner. Clement had mentioned that uh, you know we were we were able to go down to uh, uh, Orlando area for the uh, Florida Rural Economic Development Summit. We uh, got to meet quite a few quite a few people that are kind of in this economic development world, and and uh, we're we're really blessed to to have good conversations, you know, to network with folks, and uh, a lot of a lot of things that we see there are things that we already are aware of and we talk about. Um, we talk about, obviously, workforce, how important that is. Um, I don't want to go through this whole entire program, but I will say that workforce was, was a big part of it, soft skills, hard skills, trying to, to teach and educate our, our um, young folks as they're moving up into to the, to the position that we need them to be in so that we can recruit and bring business to the community. Uh, we also... Uh, we had a workshop, and, and in the workshop, we were given, kind of given a challenge of, of uh, there were different topics, and somehow uh, Commissioner Fleming and I wound up in the same same group, and, and ours was basically internet access. And one of the things that we learned is that uh, in, in today's world, if, if we can't provide internet access, whether that's through fiber optics or if that's through broadband, we're, we're going to really struggle to get business here in Swanee County, uh, as well as any county. Uh, it's, it's just a necessity to be able to support these these new tech companies and things, even in manufacturing and other things that they've got to have it. So, um, I know that's something that we talked about and that we're going to have to try to work on. And um, I think Sheriff said he could help get that for us with no cost at all. So um, we appreciate him and Fire Rescue coming on board to help us with that task. So, uh, and I don't know, Commissioner Fleming, if you have any. Because we, we worked in that group together. and Well, I, I would say that I, I'm proud of our economic director. Uh, him, him attending, that means a lot. Uh, because I think I went to just about every one of the summits. And they, they, there's a lot of information, uh, lots of information out there that, that can be implemented back here this way. Um, what I do like is, I think it was River Oaks, it was talking about the technical college out there about um, Swanee County, the nurses that graduate, where they go, what they do, and they were talking about Swanee County. Yes. Um, and the next thing is that Dixie County, I think it's Dixie County, have yes. this, um, this program, aeronautics program. Um, the children, and these kids, they learn about flying and all this kind of stuff, and they have a job. And also, everybody's not going to college. That's right. 
Absolutely. Everybody not going to college. So we need plumbers, we need electricians, we need uh, carpentries, carpenters, we need all these kind of people. Everybody don't go to college. So therefore, these technical schools are really helping the ones that are not making it on the collegiate level. So there's a lot of stuff that was out there. It's been three weeks, uh, Jimmy. Yep. Um, you know, the last two weeks ago, I couldn't hardly remember from the, from the excitement. Right. So two more weeks after that, I most certainly don't have. <laughs> right. Well, you touched on a big part of it, and a lot of it is workforce in our technical college, and, and they were mentioned by name uh, with some of the work that they're doing, and so we know that that's important. Uh, a few other topics that we, we discussed, obviously, is site selection, and there was a big group of site selectors there at the conference. Uh, just, just so you know, uh, they made it very clear to us that the top three things is when they come into town, they want the zoning in place, they want the utilities in place, and they want to know that no longer in three months they can get permitted, um, preferably two months. I think we're working on that. I mean, I, I really do with, with uh, the, obviously, the, the infrastructure that we're looking to put in, the, the catalyst site. But uh, these guys in today's world, are, they're, they're just they're impatient. They, they want to jump, and they want to jump now. We also had the privilege of meeting the um, uh, new director for Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, Mr. Ken Lawson and also uh, President and CEO of Enterprise Florida, Jamal Sowell. So um, we, we, we have some other things, but, but I don't want to dwell on that all night long. But it was a great conference, and we appreciated, um, you know, Commissioner Fleming being with us and participating in that. Um, also, this past, this past Friday, the uh, North Florida Economic Development Partnership had a meeting in Chiefland. We covered a lot of things there again. Work for workforce is so huge, and that's a big part of the meeting we have. The uh, governor has now uh, issued a new executive order, 19-31, and basically it's saying that uh, he, he wants to set charter course for Florida to move from 24th in the nation in workforce to number one by the year 2030. Um, that's, that's a big initiative, and he's got a lot of ideas on how to make that happen, but uh, you're going to see a lot of stuff coming down the pike on that. Um, we also, I spoke with Mr. Harris, they asked that we give an update on the I-75 and 136 water plant, so we kind of we kind of let them know where we were on that, and we were actually ahead of a lot of folks, so <laughs> a lot of them were still, were still fighting to get their, their, uh, their stuff in, in place. Uh, I would also like to mention that the actual State of Florida Economic Development Conference is May 20th through 22nd in Hammock Beach. Uh, I would really encourage any of you guys that could could put that on your calendar to go and kind of touch, uh, touch these folks that we're out there working with with the state of Florida. Uh, quick update, North Florida Community College Learning Station. We actually met with uh, Ms. Gabrielle and her group with CRA uh, last week and, and introduced them to that. I know um, the county attorney, Mr. Pravat, has been helping us, kind of guiding us along the way um, as we move forward with that. So, so uh, we're making progress, and uh, they're real excited about moving forward. So. We're also, I wanted to mention that, um, and this is something that had been going on, and I don't know if you guys were familiar with it, but uh, several years ago, we actually do, did the uh, Strategic Sites Inventory Program, and this was where um, Leota uh, Location and Design came in, and they identified multiple properties in the community that were good for development, and um, we considered that like a phase one after they identified these properties, there was a working group that got together that actually looked at the properties to maybe um, give them some information that they didn't have. If, if the property was never going to be sold or if the property was full of sinkholes, um, they were told that information at the time, so these properties were discarded. So when this report was done, the top 16 properties were put into this report. We received a grant and... Uh, and he's not here, is he? Uh, he had been kind of working on this along with Mr. Harris to keep this moving after, after Dr. Jackson left. And the, the, the grant we received was to I'd take basically four of these properties and take them to the next level, to a phase two. What that'll do is it'll basically just, when a company comes in, we can say that we've already been through this extra step of engineering and identification and um, uh, rough order magnitude of cost on some things to, to just make it that more accessible. So that's another piece we're working on. I um, want to mention that uh, out at the Catalyst site, 
Um, I've had conversations with both Klausner and uh, with, with Matco uh, in the last week, and I know that they're both excited that for all the hard work that that rail spur, but they're excited now that that's in, and I know that they're looking on moving forward. And, and uh, especially uh, Mr. Ferber, he, um, he said that he is really, really excited. Uh, he's laying track now, his own track, and if some things work out, he's going to be laying a lot of track out there. So stuff uh, transloading, uh, stuff coming in on rail, him being able to disperse it and, and ship it. So uh, he said to be sure to thank you for your hard work, Mr. Harris, and, and the commissioners that, that you guys have been just magnificent to work with, and uh, he really appreciates the support. So uh, kudos to you guys. You're familiar because I think all of you attended, the obviously, the FPL um, ribbon cutting over in, in – um, Columbia County, and I know a lot of you were at Rotary, and so I won't dwell on that, but we are excited that FPL is fixing to uh, break ground on the new Echo River Solar Energy Center here in Swanee County. Uh, TDC, uh, is there any questions on that? Any? I'm going to jump to TDC real quick. Why is it called Echo River? Do you remember? Because that's the Indian name for Swanee. He was paying attention. Okay. <laughs> you got that, Jamie? All right. <clears throat> yes, I was paying attention. Okay. Uh, on, the, on the TDC side, I'll just let you know that uh, just uh, last month we awarded small grants out to Catfish Festival, Swanee River Riding Club, Wings Over Swanee, and the Blueberry Festival. Uh, large events that were previously awarded that are coming up, uh, and, and by this I mean the event is actually coming up. So if you guys want to participate, uh, Swanee River, the Spring Reunion, um, the Swanee River Jam, and then, of course, Mr. Scott has uh, several tournaments coming up over the summer, baseball tournaments. So all of those were funded through TDC dollars, and, and we would ask that you support those. Uh, our RFPs for our marketing company um, for TDC are due in this Friday, March the 8th, and from that point on, we we'll, should be moving forward with a new marketing company. I'll let you know that State Tourism Day in Tallahassee is March the 13th, Carissa will be attending that, representing Swanee County. And also, um, moving forward to, she, she attended part one of Marketing College last year, which is part of the, the TDC piece, and she will be attending part two of that over the summer. That is on our calendar. Um, I did pass out, <clears throat> hopefully, that you guys see the new TDC brochure. Uh, this has been a long time coming, years coming. Um, this is just going to be the first one, but there will be more to come as we move forward. Um, and I will, I will put some out in the lobby. But um, this piece promotes Swanee County and uh, our springs, our rivers, restaurants, things to do, uh, places to stay. We're real excited about it. And um, they literally came in at 3.30 this afternoon. So um, if you guys need any, we've, we've got uh, cases of them over at our office, and we would... Uh, Love to disperse them out so we can get them out so people can see. I also want to mention something very interesting. Um, sometimes stuff just kind of happens and you don't know really why, but the Crystal was on a call with Visit Florida uh, last Friday, and, and these calls happen, you know, every couple of weeks to give updates of what's going on through the state of Florida in tourism. And I have it recorded, but I don't know that you could. Um, they send it out afterwards. They record it and send it out. But we actually uh, transcribed it, and, and I'd like to. The, the gist of the call was they were talking about welcome centers, and they've kind of seen a little bit of, of uh, downturn on some of our local welcome centers, and they're trying to kind of identify why that is. Um, and so this this call was going on, and this was with David Dodd, who's the Vice President of Visitor Service for the state of Florida. He said that 2.7 million visitors actually visit the Welcome Center in 2018. 14 million brochures were given away. The goal of the Welcome Centers, obviously, is for frontline customer service, first impressions, and it's intended to make people stay longer and spend more money here in the state of Florida. The staff at these Welcome Centers help visitors book reservations, help with vacation planning, et cetera. But then he paused, and he says, and I quote, 
we talk a little bit about competition. There's competition in other visitor centers, but also, if you don't recognize it, this, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's the Busy Bee in Live Oak, Florida. That's our competition. No, that's not a welcome center. It is not. But guess what? It is a great place. It is safe. It is clean. It has a clean environment. And people actually plan their east and west trips on I-10 to stop at the Busy Bee. We want that same kind of planning to go on at our welcome centers. We want them to be as desirable and as appealing as the Busy Bee. And then he said, that's where I stop also. So what we have discovered is that our local travel center is taking away from our welcome centers on I-10. Um, good and bad, I guess, depending on how you look at it. But uh, I did let the folks at Busy Bee know this, and I sent it to them, and they were, they were absolutely amazed. So part two of this was I asked them, could we actually go out and put like a kiosk or displays out in their travel center, Busy Bee, if more people are stopping there than they're stopping at the Welcome Center, then that's what we need to be represented. And they have graciously agreed to do that. So uh, we're going to actually start putting our brochures out at Busy Bee and then, of course, not just, you know, the county, but our state parks and anyone that wants to join in. But I just thought it was pretty amazing that the state of Florida has identified that Busy Bee is pulling traffic from their Welcome Centers. So just wanted to mention that, uh, let you know that they're doing some great things out there and they're great partners also. So... Uh, any questions? Anybody? Anyone have any questions? No. You mentioned workforce. Yes, sir. Didn't we have a conversation recently, or, or you had had it with someone, that um, the workforce has become more important to businesses looking to relocate than the incentive programs? Yes, yes. That that uh, that is the truth. They, uh, literally, the, the, the uh, article goes on to, to discuss that when businesses are, are coming into your community, if you can identify that you have a workforce, they, they, that, they rate that more important than if you give them an, a, a grant, if you can save them on some tax dollars, because they just can't find it. And, and there's actually, I'll expand just a little bit, one of our speakers, Mr. Raj from uh, I think it's Shamak, I think was his last name. He, he does a great program, and I reached out to him, and I would like to bring him to Swanee County, and I'd like to pull in, of course, you guys and uh, the school system and, and pretty much everyone in the community because this guy has implemented a program of where he trains them up first. Uh, right now, and even when we look at career workforce, uh, they, 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 they react. So if a company comes in and they need something, then we can identify that there's a need and we can train them up afterwards. His approach has been, I'm going to train up 500 people that can weld and I'm going to go get companies that come in here that weld. And I can use this to prove to them we have, we have the people in our community who can, uh, who can go to work for you and support your business and make it successful. But yes, our workforce is, is absolutely um, the biggest issue right now. And they know it. And we're also losing a lot of our workforce. So as... as that generation gets older. Any other questions for Ms. Morris? That's it. Thanks, sir. Appreciate you guys. Mr. Chairman, real quick. Uh, uh, Jimmy, before you leave today, um, this evening, would you talk to me? I've got an idea, maybe a sponsorship for some educational program. Okay, great. Thanks. If you indulge me, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just mention one thing. Jimmy mentioned uh, about tournaments. And I just want to let you know, we, last staffing or staff report, I mentioned about the adult tournaments were starting. Um, had a meeting uh, staff did with uh, the organizers of that organization, and uh, they were talking about trying to do a rebirth of adult softball again. They, they said they fell in love with our facility. Uh, the turf fields and, and what's coming, uh, they're just amazed that we can have that here. But uh, that was the buzz and all their internet and social media buzz with all the teams and stuff about how good a time they had in Live Oak and uh, the, the condition of the field and the complex and everything. So um, they want every, every weekend available that we don't have anything going. They want to book our facility for that. So There wasn't many weekends, were there? Well, they're not going to be, they're <laughs> going to be more, <clears throat> they're going to be more selective and I think our investment may be higher now. Well, I was going to ask you, I, I was out there just a little while ago before the meeting. And 
with the with the amount of people that are participating out there, we've about outgrown the capacity of what those fields can hold. Have we not? We have. When we when we designed this space, we talked about that would keep us for X number of years. X number of years was a while ago. Yeah. Um, that's why we the idea was that Heritage Park developed that. Right. Um, we need to start. That's not as opportunity not as opportune as we'd like for it to be. So um, there may be some other space available down the road, but we need to start looking uh, for that next piece. Uh, we got some things in the works, but um, anyway. And that's the reason I bring. That's the only reason I brought it up was just right. so that you could let us know that we need to be looking down the road because we have outgrown it. Right. Well, that and and we're hoping that at the Douglas Center we can uh, create more these practice fields there also for use also because the teams are looking for places to practice well, that stuff. Actually, what we were talking about when, we, when I was there today is that back when we all played ball, we had one field that we played on, and then everybody practiced out with a chicken wire backstop and a hay field. Right, right. And now practices are scheduled around the game fields, and so we, we do need more fields. Right. Would that be adults that were practicing out there um, Tripping and tripping over uh, gopher holes and stuff. Today? No, no. no. You said out in hay fields. That was when I was a kid. Oh, okay. That's right. I can see an adult do that. <laughs> All right. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh, the other thing, uh, uh, we've started the playground at the Douglas Center. Yes, we have. Good deal. Um, how long would that take for it to be completed? It probably looks like when I went by today, it looks like it's probably the end of the week. Probably the the water set us back a little bit. That. Uh, Earth holds dirt, I mean, holds water really bad. It must be a cap of clay there, but um, it, I went by today and like it was full, fully installed, but I'm sure we got more work to do, mulch and such. Uh, so you got that pipe, and then you got the one at uh, Heritage right. Park going in at the same time. Right, the one at Heritage Park is done, except for adding the mulch and such, tweaking it some, and then the, ball, the little ball field will go in there also. And that'll be, the, they actually showed up today, the company did to start doing the work there. That's a little AstroTurf, little T-ball size field. Gotcha. So, but, right. uh, and the, uh, uh, not me and another staff report, but uh, the, also the, the trail works continuing on also. So. Yeah, I've seen that going on too. So, a lot got, going on. A couple, couple right things now. going on. A lot going on. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. You want to jump into Miss Betty? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on to general business. Item 17, discuss with possible board action, waste tire removal. Mr. Mr. Harris. Chairman, um, if you would uh, bear with me for a moment, I'm just checking my mic. Mr. Hancock, can you hear me? Yes. Good. <laughs> test, um, test. In fact, Commissioner Fleming, could you turn your microphone down towards you a little bit better? I noticed that when you were speaking a minute ago. Thank you. Um, Item number 17, we, we uh, bid out the waste tire disposal. I could have placed this on the consent agenda. Uh, the bottom line is we're recommending that you reject the bids because they came in higher than what we're currently spending to send these tires to Andalusia, Alabama. And I gave you an illustration of that in your packet, so my recommendation is that the board reject bids associated with bid number 2019-06 and authorize us to continue shipping the tires uh, to the current destination, which is Andalusia, Alabama. Right. Any questions from the board? Do we have to have a motion? Yep, need a motion to reject. Move to reject the bids. Got a motion by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, item number 18, discuss with possible board action, County Road 49. Mr. Harris. We have a couple of things I want to discuss on that. Today we opened the bids um, on County Road 49, and for the benefit of the public, this is the first phase of a multi-phase project. It's starting at 27 and working its way north. Uh, we had previously opened bids, then we had a, a contest over the bid issue. The board resolved that, so we advertised and rebid. Anderson Columbia is the low bid. We had our engineer evaluate the 
uh, submittal. So we're recommending that uh, or asking the board to award to Anderson Columbia in the amount of two million six hundred seventy six thousand nine hundred thirty eight dollars and seven cents for the resurfacing of County Road 49. That's the first request. That's a request for a motion. Is that what it is? I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, Mr. Harris, about the bid? <clears throat> Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Do I have a second? Second. Who was that? I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Hill? Second by Commissioner Hill. Any further discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, sir. Mr. Chairman, I would point out that the new bids actually came in. Uh, Anderson Columbia's price was lower than it was in the first round when we bid this previously. And we're thankful for that. Mr. Harris, could you repeat that? Louder. I don't think there was ever a discussion on whether the bids would be lower or not, but we don't really want to rehash this, do we? Let's go. <laughs> Second item associated with County Road 49 is the patching of the north end. Um, because those this is that, where you fix to make it up. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> for, the, for those that weren't here uh, previously, perhaps, I'll just point out that in this multi-phase project, uh, we recognized, county staff recognized, that the worst part of County Road 49 is actually on the north end, starting at 90, working its way south. We asked DOT to allow us to... Uh, <clears throat> have that portion of the project be phase one, and they just simply could not work it out. So we've worked on trying to come up with a solution that will last us potentially five years um, to go in there and remove some really bad sections of County Road 49 on the north end and make it much safer. Uh, right now, if you drive through there, you'll see that most people are driving down the center of the road because the edges are broken down so bad. When I discussed this with our county staff, we talked about going out there and removing the asphalt and digging down, uh, trying to remove some potentially unsuitable soils that are causing a lot of this settling, building it back up, trying to compact it, and then having someone replace the asphalt. Um, we established a not to exceed price of $8,000 previously uh, if we could utilize Anderson and piggyback on the contract that they had with uh, or that they have with DOT to resurface uh, US 90 and do the work that they're doing there. When a representative of the company went out there and looked at it, they had a different recommendation and I don't necessarily disagree with it. It'll save a lot of time uh, and the the real time associated with it is the inconvenience to the public and the maintenance of traffic and everything else that's involved. But they suggested allowing them to mill out those bad areas and use asphalt to build it back up and it will hold. I don't disagree that it will hold, but it's an entirely different process than what we started with. They sent us a price on that of a little over $82,000 to do the work. And the makeup comes in. There it is. <laughs> That's a different project. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I will emphasize it's entirely different than what we started with. And I have no problem with that approach. Um, no, it is different than what we asked for. Um, we were going to do the base work and just have them come in and overlay the asphalt. The problem with us doing the base work, and we recognized it, is that because there are so many locations um, in that area that we would have to try to prep everything and then we'd have to have it sealed in hopes that the seal would hold long enough for us to get all of these things done and so they could come in and pave all of them and it just it's unlikely that that would happen because of the volume of traffic there they would beat that stuff right back out the big trucks that run up and down that road before we could get it all prepared in time for them to pave it so it's a more efficient from a timing standpoint more efficient approach to have this done. It just cost more money. Um, my request is that the board allow us to go ahead and do that. We checked with DOT. DOT doesn't have a problem with us um, util utilizing the numbers in their contract, uh, or we could potentially use the numbers in the uh, contract that we just awarded, the bid that we just awarded here. 
in any event, the numbers that we had were $82,000 and something just above that. Um, I've got the money in the road department budget. I would have to move some money from our stormwater uh, budget line, and then I have some <coughs> other money in contract uh, paving services, and between the two, we could get the job done. It desperately needs to be done. If you've traveled that location, you know how dangerous it is, um, and we've got a solution that we can employ that will make it much safer. So I'm open to questions or... Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I, I, forgive me. I think you have mentioned it. How far north does the phase one project go? From 27? It, it'll end south of 252. Two, okay. It, it, it doesn't make it all the way to 252, make that first phase. No. Wow. So there's another portion in there, and we recognized that when they came and gave us that last update with their TIP, that there was a piece that was missing in there because we knew the first phase wasn't going to make it all the way. So... They're working on reconciling that, where hopefully that will be incorporated in the next phase. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. 207. Um, the amount that we were awarded for the job versus what the bids came in, what's the, is, is there any money left over there to extend the project further with the bids coming in lower or no? What we typically do is go ask them to let us use all of the money. That's what go I mean. Go ahead and take it and extend the limits. Okay. So whatever's left over, our plan is to not leave anything on the table, and they've been pretty good about agreeing to let us use it all to extend the limits. Any questions about the um, repair job for 82000 I think it needs to be done. Um, I was just busting your chops about the price on it. It's more than what we had set, but it's different limits on the work that we um, we we approved the eight thousand on. We were going to do the base work, and they've just laid the asphalt, and this is them doing basically everything that needs to be done, and and giving it a better fix. So. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Um, you say you allow us to use the numbers on um, the jobs. Are you talking about uh, you're talking about piggybacking on these jobs, but not utilizing right. any grant money no. associated with it? So, this is all going to be spent by the county. This is this will be a count a cost that's occurred by the county here. Okay. Um, right. Then the second question uh, has to do with if you're moving money around, is this uh, money that you're going to have to come back to the county, um, the board, potentially before uh, the next fiscal year? and ask to be replaced? No. Uh, the money that we, we created this line for stormwater management uh, a couple of years ago because of, one, the number of sinkholes that we have to deal with and the mm -hmm. erosion and just trying to maintain retention ponds. I don't have a critical timeline on those, so we should be fine. We've already done a lot of the major repairs on that largest retention pond uh, going into Klausner off of 169th. So I don't envision a problem. I checked the green bar uh, before we came to the meeting today. We've got plenty of money there to do what we need to do. What I don't need is for commissioners to ask for a lot of paving to be done in their districts to fix things over the <laughs> next uh, several months until we get back to the budget workshop. Now, this is outside of chip seal. We, we will still have some money for emergency repairs. Mr. Chairman, I was on that road the other day. I don't get on it very often, but uh, um, I was driving on the other side, thankfully, uh, going southbound, and the north, the, those northbound lanes are, they're pretty, I mean, they're, it's a I'd roller coaster. stand on them, let alone uh, drive on them, but uh, uh, definitely something that's it's a safety issue. It's just a matter of time before somebody loses control out there. So I move that we go ahead and spend it. You got a motion by Commissioner Richardson? Mr. Chairman. To authorize the repairs, yes, sir. I I just like to say uh, I'm in support of trying to get that done. I know it's more money than we had allocated for it, but uh, it's definitely a hazard out there. And also with Anderson taking the whole project on, basically they're taking the liability of everything as far as maintenance of traffic and all other things concerned. And there's a lot of traffic on that road. Uh, and also we kind of fell behind a little bit by a few months because. I think Mr. Harris told me when I asked when he was going to do it, he said between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> oh, so. I don't recall that. That seemed like I remember that. 
that a second? That's a second. <laughs> Got a second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. If I could comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is one additional thing that we asked uh, to have included in this uh, repairing of 49, and that's at 102nd, we've had a serious problem with an elevation issue where an unpaved road is higher than the paved road, and it's constantly the lime's running out across the road. Mm -hmm. We went ahead and uh, did some culvert work out there, and I'd like to pave that back to the right-of-way line um, with this project, and that was included in the price as well. I just want to emphasize that that was an addition to what we're actually doing on 49, but it can be done at the same time. But it's included in that 82,000? It is. All right, sir. I'm, I'm okay. You good with that? Good. All right. Any further discussion? Got a motion by Commissioner Richardson, second by Commissioner Stapleton. Hearing no other discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Um, Mr. Dan Hartley, you have to forgive me. I got a list up here, and I just go straight down the list, and your name wasn't on it. It was sitting beside me. So I'm going to stop in the middle of what we're doing and let you come up here and give your presentation. I should have had you 20 or 30 minutes ago, but no, my fault. Board of Commissioners, thank you all very much. My name is Dan Hartley, and I only know one of you all, Mr. Hale. I'm sorry I hadn't been here until now, but we sort of hit the, hit the ground running. I work for Mr. Chuck Brandon, uh, newly elected uh, State Representative Chuck Brandon, and uh, just wanted to kind of bring you up to speed on what we're trying to get done and uh, what we've put in and some of the bills. So we'll begin with... Uh, House Bill 295, which if passed, will designate certain roads for fallen troopers. There are over 20 troopers that will be recognized across Florida, including parts of I-10 in Baker County and I-75 over in Columbia County as well. Uh, HB 297 is an act relating to attorney's fees. This is a victim's bill which <clears throat> states that if you're a victim of stalking or domestic violence and you lose a court injunction, you don't have to pay those attorney's fees. Uh, a House Bill 531 is relating to children with hearing aid insurance. Uh, we're working on encouraging insurance companies, and that's the key word here, uh, encouraging insurance companies to help pay for hearing aid so that the parents of children who are hearing impaired can get a break. Um, some of you may know uh, Mr. Brandon's son has the cochlear implants and has been deaf since he was born. And back way back when, uh, insurance companies wouldn't pay for uh, any any portion of that, and they're very 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 expensive. And from what I understand, the st the uh, statistics are, I believe, less than one percent of America's children qualify for even cochlear implants. So um, we're going to encourage the insurance companies, which that's going to be an uphill battle, we're sure. But we're introducing it as a bill anyway. House Bill 863 will deal with physician referrals and making sure that consumers have a better choice when receiving referrals. Basically what this is, is if the physician recommends you to see another physician or someone else, we want to make sure that they're not in the same network. In other words, they're not monopolizing. We want to give you an opportunity to go to whoever you want to see, basically. Uh, two of the last bills will be regular department bills. Pri uh, the primary one will be for the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Uh, anything the department needs clarification on the statute, conforming to federal laws, or making any technical changes will be included in the bill. We've also enter, entered some appropriation bills. Uh, both of the appropriation requests we have filled out for the Columbia County, uh, one for the rail spur, if you're familiar with the rail spur on the I-90, and uh, one for Bell Road, uh, have been filed and have been referenced to their respective committees already. Um, we're also fighting for compression funding to help extra education funding to Columbia County as well. And did we have a, a bill, appropriations bill for Swanee County? I don't have a mention of that in here. I know we were working with the no, sheriff. We can something. throw one together real quick. Yep. Yeah, get it together real fast, and I'll run it up to Tallahassee. Actually, the uh, session started today. I uh, was there last night, and um, it's pretty uh, active over there right now. Uh, Mr. Brandon's getting his feet wet. And so we're doing everything we can for all the counties that we represent. And uh, we're here to help everybody. 
And any questions? I do. Uh, yes, sir. I um, I was I, we've been following. I was uh, was very pleasantly surprised and um, um, and very happy uh, just to say this that um, he I talked to um, Representative Brannon on Sunday evening um, and uh, on chat I guess I chatted with him and about the uh, fetal heartbeat bill. Yes. And, yes. Um, I was notified this morning that he has now uh, been authorized to co-sponsor that bill as well. Good. And so I am uh, very happy for that. I think people, love, many of the people of Swanee County would be happy about that as well. Well, Mr. Brandon's always been uh, pro-life, always. Came under a little bit of fire from a few people during the campaign for that, but he'll always stand by that. Always pro-life, so we're glad he did that too. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would, I just would yes. like to say, I think when we had our legislative day and, and Mr. Chuck was there, <laughs> Uh, the one thing we did talk to him about was uh, the sewage spill out of Valdosta. Uh, he's been on that. Mr. Dan Hartley's been coming to the meetings uh, along with our economic tourist director back there. He's been attending all of those as well. Uh, and they, they're definitely helping us. They're standing behind us. They're doing what they can. Uh, the last meeting, I'll just take this opportunity to mention, we had uh, representatives from Rubio's office, Scott's office, uh, DEP, all, everyone's getting involved now. So. Uh, I'm anxious to see where this goes, but I want to say thank you. And thank, thank you, sir, for helping out with that. One of the things Mr. Brandon wanted to do when uh, we took office or when he took office and we supported him was to be active and be out there. And this morning I was in Hamilton County at their county commission. Uh, this afternoon I was over in Baker County and I'm over here. Uh, we, we want to be present, you know. This is a temporary job for us. We're here to serve the people um, of District 10. And if we can't do that, then we need to go home. So that's what we want to do. And uh, I'd like to, if I could, if it's OK, I pass out cards. Uh, some of you may have a card. Some of you may not. Um, but if you need anything, that's why we're here. Give us a call. Right now, we're uh... we can share those. I'll take two. Yeah, I'll take, I, got, I got them. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We have an office in uh, Columbia County. That's our main office, and then we have a uh, satellite office over in Baker County at the courthouse. And, uh, of course, my office is in my car. I stay on the Thank road you. most of the time. But if you guys ever need anything or you know anybody who needs anything we can help them with, we can help them. We get them in the right direction. I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Hell, sir. Good to good see good you. To see you. Thank you, and sorry I didn't get to you quicker. Yes, um, it's okay. And I'll tell you, we uh, I, I called Mr. Brandon and talked to him the – day before the ribbon cutting on his new office. Uh, we had conflicting meetings that we couldn't couldn't make it there. Um, Mr. Musgrove was there, I don't think representing the board, but he was from Swanee County anyway, and uh, he attended. But well, <laughs> Yeah, y'all did, and um, I've seen plenty of pictures and, uh, on Facebook and things, and congratulations on it, it looked good. And we would have loved to have been there, we just, we had, you know how it is. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll be back around when I got some more news. Take Thanks, care. sir. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. All right. Where did I leave off? 19? Mm -hmm. All right. Item 19, schedule a workshop to discuss the MSBU for road improvements. Mr. Harris. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, um, I'm believing now I had a date of uh, well, it doesn't matter what the date was. Too many of you had conflicts. Um, how about we try for maybe half an hour before your next regular board meeting, which would be the 19th? That would work best for me. Will that work for everyone? I want to talk about the MSBUs, give you some updates, give you information. We met with the attorneys from Tallahassee the other day to discuss the MSBU for road improvements. We have a lot of information we can share with you. Um, that will be helpful to you when you're communicating with uh, people in the community um, about the program. So is everyone okay with that date? I'm good, I'm, with, it. I'm good with that. I mean, uh, everybody else. Start at uh, 5.30 on the is 19th. By plenty, 15 or 30 minutes, plenty of time? I think so. All right. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? Do you yeah. want to make it five just to be safe? Or? Well, I'm, 
five fifteen, or do you think five thirty is plenty of time? Let's go for five fifteen. Okay. Five fifteen. That'll work. Should. All right. Y'all send out reminders, please. We'll, we'll send you <laughs> reminders. Mandy. All right, item 20, discuss board action. <laughs> Any issues associated with the water and the wastewater at I-75? I don't course? have a lot to report there, just that they're out there working on the test well. Um, we did have to take them a bulldozer out there to drag them around. It's been so wet. Uh, but if we didn't, the, the difficulty is they pack up and leave and then wait until they have another opening on their schedule. So we couldn't afford to do that. So they're out there working on that. And we're thankful. Uh, Mr. Bravat and I continue to work on the easements. We hope to have that wrapped up sometime soon. And that's all I have to report on. All right. Did we have any additional agenda items? I don't see any. None. All right. This time we'll call for public comments and concerns. Anybody wishing to speak, make their way to the podium. Give their name, address for the record. Good evening. I'm Robert Ford, and I reside at 8896 135th Loop, Live Oak, Florida. Uh, I want to thank the uh, chairman for allowing me to speak this afternoon. I'm all dressed up this evening, and uh, I uh, really uh, hold everybody in high esteem, but not enough to dress up like this for you. <laughs> but I uh, just uh, went to a funeral uh, to a friend of mine in Jacksonville, so I'm just returning from Jacksonville. Uh, I just want to make this disclaimer that what I got to say may not be politically correct. And it may be a little bit uh, racially insensitive, maybe uh, understood as racially insensitive, but I hope that it's not. And what I want to talk about is how I fail the Douglas Center, how me, how I fail the Douglas Center. I want to start off with something a little bit light. You know, this woman sees her husband standing on the scales in the bathroom, you know, sucking his belly in, you know. She walks up behind him and she says, you know that's not going to help, right? He said, sure it is. Sure it will. That's the only way I can see the numbers. Uh, you know, I don't have that belly problem, but metaphorically speaking, you know, the only way I was able to see how I failed the Douglas Center was to see what conspired at the last commission meeting. A simple request by us to put the Douglas Center on the National Registry seemed to have set off some events that was uh, way beyond my wildest expectation. Yours truly served 26 years in the United States Army, primarily in Airborne and Special Operations Unit. And I discovered early on, if you're going to be a soldier, you must have some courage. And if, if you're going to have some courage, you have to demonstrate a courage or conviction from time to time. Of course, it's easy to have courage when you possess the high ground, you got the wind at your back, you got numerically superior forces, and you got numerically uh, a firepower on your side. But I could tell you that uh, without that, it, it takes a measure of fortitude to stand alone against a system that holds the high ground with all its resources, with time on its side that could bring power to bear to create distorted narratives without concerns of repercussions. I could tell you that I am unapologetically a staunch advocate for keeping a portion of the Douglas Center for our posterity's sake. I believe the community that we live in have a solemn obligation to preserve a portion of that uniquely historically, historical facility. And I hope you recognize what it takes to stand here alone without a real champion on this policy board that will advocate for you. It's not for the timid. I have discovered early on when one speaks truth to power, the power being the status quo, 
there's always some consequences, especially if you are an African American. I want to use this analogy of a chess game as an example of the power here of the status quo, status quo. In this game, one side of this chess game, one side of the board has all its pieces, plus an extra row of queens on the board. Now, the queen being the most powerful uh, piece on the board to protect this king, and this king being the status quo. <coughs> the opponent, the antagonist in this game, has only pawns, one row of pawns, which is the smallest piece and the most expendable pieces on the board. <coughs> This is represented by the Douglas Alumni Group and the Douglas Center. Can you imagine the outcome of this game? It will be check, and checkmate, game over and with just a couple of moves. In the scriptures, Matthew, the 25th chapter, uh, uh, 25th through the 40th verse, speaks about the reward for those who will stand up for the least in God's kingdom. At nearly 70 years old, I have learned that the reward that, speak, that is spoke of in this scripture does not always come on this side of eternity, but it will come. How I failed the Douglas Center. Shortly after the Douglas Center was formed four years ago, 19, uh, 2015, as a nonprofit organization with the primary mission of uh, protecting the legacy of the Douglas High School and the Douglas Center as a nonprofit organization. Uh, let me just say this. This was formed at the behest and the suggestion of our county administrator. Just perhaps, I had unrealistic expectations on what we could accomplish for the Douglas Center. I truly thought that if we would make reasonable appeals to the board and administration, they would surely respond in kind. At the last commission meeting, uh, February the 19th, we heard about the safety concerns at the Douglas Center, and they are mostly valid. If it is also valid and true that four years ago, on March the, 5th, March the 11th, 2015, after the Douglas Alumni Association first formed, we sent our first letter to the board and administration, which was entitled Preventive Maintenance for the Douglas Center. It highlighted some of the same concerns which was talked about at the last meeting. And I was expecting, I was expecting that the board and county to respond positively. We followed up with a series of letters highlighting these same issues, yet nothing ever was done. At the behest and urging of a board member on May the 9th, 2016, we sent a letter to the board and administration entitled a petition for professional consulting services for the Douglas Center. There was a spirited discussion on our board before each of these letters went out, and a few board members felt it would be counterproductive to send these letters. The board members felt, uh, these board members who felt it would be counterproductive on the surface now seem like they were right. It also appeared that my efforts over the last four years had unintended consequences. One alumni board confided in me after we got the historical marker approved for the Douglas Center, which essentially made that site a historical site. And what he said was this. He said that the, the, that the, that the county would never approve or abide putting any of those buildings at the Douglas Center on the National Registry. And it appears that his prediction was correct. Indeed, instead of uh, convincing the policymakers and administration to preserve a portion of the Douglas Center, it seemed as though that a deliberate plan was constructed to completely get rid of that unique, uniquely historic building. This is how I failed the Douglas Center. In retrospect, probably too many times I spoke up when I should have been silent. Probably too many times I was silent when I should have spoken up. April 15, 2017, the board conducted its first workshop on the Douglas Center. 
Mr. Ford, I don't mean to be rude, but I don't need a history lesson on it. If you got, it. we've we've all been through it. I need you to pick it up a little bit for me. If you can. Okay, we we we, we conducted two uh, uh, workshops on the Douglas Center. The first one, we submitted some plans to keep portion of the Douglas Center. The next workshop took place. Uh, the board approved uh, 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 established a commission a nine-member commission that would make recommendations on the Douglas Center. But none of these things ever come to fruition. One of the Douglas member boards member came to me a few weeks ago, and what he told me was that he heard some rumors that the county was coming up with a proposal to demolish the Douglas Center. I told him, you know, he had to be smoking some stuff. It was not true. I said, no way that they would do this thing. He insisted that he had heard these rumors, and I would not uh, 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 entertain anything that he was saying. But at the last commission meeting, item number 26, it said, discuss with possible board action on multiple uh, topics associated with the Douglas Center, Robert Ford, uh, Memorial Park, and, and Douglas uh, Legacy Park, and National Registry, uh, County, Minister, County Attorney Jimmy Prevett, uh, and Greg Scott, Parks and Recreation, for recreational op opportunities. In spite of what took place at that meeting, you could see how that wording of that uh, agenda item, how confusing and not clear it was. And you would be disingenuous to otherwise, to say otherwise. Too many times I spoke up, I spoke truth to power when I should have kept silent. Too many times I was silent when I should have spoken truth to power. On Black History Month, February the 19th, we were presented with two choices, two choices, a false choice. These items related to the Douglas Center. Let me just skip over this stuff. Historically speaking, if you were to learn about the history and the unique history of the Douglas Center and what it has done in this uh, community, it is not black history, it is American history and the chronicles of a segment of our society which was denied the benefits of full citizenry, and yet they went on to do great, make great contributions here locally and nationally. Since I'm a soldier, so I'm a soldier, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, the first two service members from Douglas who died in Vietnam on October, and Feb October 65 and February 66. Of course, who could forget our native son and hero, Captain Charlie Ford, which is my big brother. He's the highest decorated soldier from Swanee County. He was a Green Beret and a military pilot. All three of these patriots gave all that mortality has to give. The Douglas Center has produced countless numbers of men and women who have fought for this country. My family alone, uh, my four other older brothers and I, have a total of 99 years of service to this country. And within our family, we have four Purple Hearts shedding blood for this country. My family grew up in the 30s to the 1960s, and you know the social conditions during this time. Yet, the teachings of our faculty members at Douglas and our parents urged us to serve this country and to fight for this country because they didn't urge us to fight for what was, but what, what, was, what, this nation, what this nation and community could be. Knowing these facts, I would like to think that all of you, this board, this audience, and the better angels of the constituency across this county would have a better perspective of what the Douglas Center represents. If you ask all of this, what, the, what does this have to do with anything that we have done? But do you think that the county would go and develop a veterans park without consulting with the veterans, local veterans group? Do you think that the county would redesign the livestock yards at the agricultural uh, complex without consulting the livestock board? or the fairgrounds without the fair board. I think you get what I'm talking about here. This shows how little the county thinks of the Douglas Alumni Association. My disappointment is this, that this board would take such a vote and 
such a, and, uh, and, and, and little and go and pass such a vote. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, there could be no deep disappointments where there is no deep love. Too many times I should have spoke up when I should have been silent. Too many times I was silent when I should have spoke up, spoken up. This is how I feel that I failed the Douglas Center. When that vote passed two weeks ago, I went home and posted something on Facebook. I didn't go into a long rant. This is what I posted on Facebook. Moving forward, I want to thank everyone for their support over the years. I would be less than honest if I didn't say February 19, 2019 was a disappointing day for me. The Swanee County uh, Board of County Commission voted to demolish, demolish the buildings at the Douglas Center, all except the gymnasium. The Alumni Board has worked hard to keep a portion of the Douglas Center. However, we were unsuccessful in doing so. We bear to remind ourselves that none of this has caught God off guard. We know that God is still on the throne and he is working things out for good. We will go on to follow up with our endeavor to put the Douglas Center as a site on the National Registry. The site is a portion of this nation's history, and we accept the obligation to push this issue forward. I want to thank you for allowing me this opportunity once again to speak power, to speak opportunity, to speak truth to power. I want to just end with a quote by Frederick Douglass, who the Douglass son is named off of. He said, there is no struggle where there is no struggle, there is no progress. Mr. Uh, Chairman, thank you for the, uh, uh, um, your tolerance and the extra time you gave me this afternoon and respect that you have uh, shown me through the years. And I hold up this entire board in high esteem. And I just hope that God could work things out for that Douglas Center. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I just want to respond to some of that and say that there has been a lot of back and forth for over nine years, and for nine years it's gotten nowhere. The board was challenged at the last board meeting to make a decision, and the board did. I understand some people don't like it, but there was nothing in that decision that was racially motivated or that was a, a downplay to any portion of the community. And uh, me and you have dealt with each other on many levels, and I'm sure you've dealt with many of the board members on this level, and that, was, that's, that definitely was not the intention of this board, and I believe you all know that. Um, I think moving forward, what, what's in store for the Douglas Center is going to be good things. The entire project's not being tore down, and I've said it over and over again. The history doesn't lie in the brick and mortar. It lies in the story, and that story can be told through many means. Yes, ma'am. Keep what you want. Yes, ma'am. You must Good travel evening. a lot because I just heard you was in California. Yeah, I, I just got, I came back to come. I keep to, tabs on you. Uh, yeah. I'm just playing. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak. My name is Anita Williams. My address is 4242 Don Luis Drive in Los Angeles. And I have some property. I don't know the address, but it's across the street from Mr. Ford's house. Um, so I'm a county property person. So I'm going to start uh, by uh, telling Mr. Ford things that you did uh, were not in vain. I think a lot of stuff with the Douglas High Center would not have happened had you not been involved. Um, but I also want to quote Martin Luther King here that says, um, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. And that's what I have. So I'm actually here to talk about the, the painting of the gymnasium and then tie that in together. I was just wondering if, since we don't know yet what's going to happen to that site, and most of the people that I've talked to that called me when I was in LA, I didn't know I was in the paper, um, they, wanted, they wanted to make sure um, there was not a uproar over the demolition, because there's some age groups that 
look at it different. My mom said we should have fought for the real Douglas Center that's uh, on, I forget, streets, behind Ebenezer, where she went to school. Um, so I was wondering if we want to talk about painting the Douglas Center so maybe we could wait on that so everything could be well, maybe mesh when you figure item, out. Item number 10 under our consent agenda was authorization, authorization to bid interior painting of the Douglas Center gymnasium not budgeted. And I believe also budgeted was but the, the exterior, exterior painting. We currently, we currently have the bid out for the exterior painting. Correct. What wasn't budgeted was the, the interior, interior, and I've asked the board to allow us to go ahead and bid that and as well. It was on tonight's agenda, and it was approved to go out to bid. But I'm wondering, it's more the outside I'm concerned about. If you're going, because a lot well, of well, we got the outside already. It's already out to bid. Right, but I'm saying the the job itself, because a, a lot of people want, and I think Mr. Fleming's having a meeting on Thursday for the community to discuss some input, and a lot of people have talked about wanting a community center there that has some portions of the old Douglas Center, historical pictures, et cetera, those type things that I'm just asking. Well, at, at this point, I can't answer that, but at this point, we're out to bid on the, or we will be going out to bid on the interior painting. We are already out to bid on the exterior. We went out to bid on the interior so that hopefully with both of them at the same time, we can get the best price to do the inside and the outside at the same time on the gymnasium. Right. But I just want to go on record as asking, because when, if you put a community center per se, I'm not psychic, and then you've painted now, and then later you paint whatever goes there, they're not going to be consistently matching unless you have sort of an idea of what they're going to look like. That, that's all I'm saying about the exterior painting if we don't know yet what's going in that property. And then secondly, um, on the demolition, if whomever is doing the demolition, I hope that since that was a, our first, second school, that, that, that the bids have been um, adequately promoted that we can get some minority bids to be a part of that demolition and if we can also see if there's things to save from that demolition that might go with. We've, we've already had staff out um, removing things and I believe they've been in contact with Mr. Ford on some of the things that um, we have taken down thus far, flagpole, bells, um, signs, some different things. And all of our bidding for every single job in the county is open to everybody without decision of uh, race, creed, color, uh, anything. So it's open to bid. Anyone capable of doing it that has the proper uh, requirements is more than welcome to bid and encouraged to bid. And um, before I sit down, I just want to thank you guys for giving uh, me the uh, opportunity to speak briefly and on my way out I'll quote my hero again um, change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability but comes through a continuous struggle and I thank you all and I thank Commissioner Fleming for taking me to do a walkthrough of the Douglas Center and I can only speak for me and say that I look forward to seeing uh, what positive will come from the future on the Douglas Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none. Ms. Terrace, do you have anything? I do. I'll be brief. There was a pre-construction meeting with DOT to discuss the closing of the railroad crossing on 129 downtown for repairs. That's scheduled to take place between April 3rd and April 20th. It's supposed to be shut down completely for 18 days. The plan is to route traffic and use as a detour uh, perimeter road. Now, most of us know that Houston will be used as well. 
when I spoke to DOT about that, they, for whatever reason, decided that they would just stick with Burmetra Road for their purposes of trying to control the detour. But I just want you to know, in case you have questions about that, uh, when it occurs. In addition to that, I had a meeting today with some of the traffic ops people. I uh, met over at North Florida Professional Services with Mr. Pittman. And we, is he still he just here? stepped out. Well, he was here. In any event, uh, he was at the meeting today. And what we discussed was, and this has come up several times, and I've had conversations when I was in Lake City uh, meeting with different DOT personnel. But I think maybe we met with the right people today to discuss uh, signage. Uh, Commissioner Hale has talked to me about this. A lot of these trucks that we had hoped would use these bypass routes um, even now are not really familiar <coughs> with the route. And part of the reason for that is there isn't proper signage on the state roads that bring those trucks to that downtown intersection of 129 and 90. So uh, after our meeting today, I'm confident that it may occur that they'll put the signs up identifying the bypass um, so that people know how to get to I-10, the truckers do, without going through downtown and those that are headed southeast and west, uh, there'll be proper signage up as well. But having said that, uh, they requested that we pass an ordinance identifying that as the truck route. So we'll be bringing an ordinance back to the board for that purpose. They said if we would just send that to them that they will start doing what they need to do to ensure that the signage gets taken care of. And that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Right. On the board members' requests and comments, Mr. Richardson, you have anything for us? No, sir, I do not. Thank you. Mr. Fleming? Uh, uh, yes, sir, I'd just like to announce that there will be a meeting at 6 o'clock at the Douglas Gymnasium. Any, anybody care to come? We're most certainly welcome to come out and uh, it's not a me just to, to some updates and some uh, questions and some Q and A's, and we'll be out there. What day? That's going to be Thursday, the seventh, this week. Anything else? That's all I have. I think, sir. Mr. Hill. No, sir. Don't have anything. Mr. Stapleton. Yes, yeah, sir. I got a couple things here. Uh, I would just like to say, uh, Mr. Ford, I appreciate you coming and speaking tonight. I've known you for many years, have great respect for you. I understand that we've uh, got some difference of opinion on what's happening with the Douglas Center. But uh, I won't never lose respect for you, from, for you. And to clarify with your brother, I had great respect for him. I went and, and listened to you speak at the, at the city council and also at the monument that you had placed downtown. Uh, I will never, trust me when I say this, and this will be years coming to pass with what's going to happen at that Douglas Center, but I will never be drawn into confrontation with race because there is none. This board has supported any and everything. And then you brought, you want to bring a little bit of Service to this country, this meeting tonight is a prime example of this board. We work with these people at American Legion, so I don't agree that that's brought into it either. But I understand you can, you can have your say and I can have mine and we can go on for years, but you just know this, that I got respect for you. And it doesn't matter your opinion of what you say because we're all entitled to our opinion, but I'll have respect for you when this whole process is over. That's all I got, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, sir. Um, I don't have anything tonight. So other than that, I just need a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. I'll say aye. Thank you all for coming out.